inside of a ghost hunt. Uh, Not heat. The sense, the cold. Right. We're looking right, for right. cold spots, literally. So, live. Yeah. So and this this is a FLIR. So basically, what does that mean for you? This is what firemen use to actually help save people. Like, this is the real deal. Like, this is a real thermal imaging gun, so to speak. Wow. So I should be red, orange, and yellow in there. And if you were a bridal party, I would tell you I'm the hottest thing inside the picture. But you guys are not a bridal party, so we're going to stick to the, the regular jokes tonight. Um, so... We're, there's a blue dot that's bouncing around the screen that's going to help your eye when you're watching the video to find the coldest spot in the frame at that particular moment. I have it set up that way on purpose along with a sensor crosshairs. So in the event, I'm going to get David. Yes. All right. So in the event when David actually finds something and, and he's like wants to measure it specifically, he can move the camera to get that center crosshairs on that specific uh, item. So and then we can kind of see where things are at in comparison. We are going to do a few starts and stops with this only because as great as this hardware is, the software for it sucks. Like, it's horrible. So if we record for too long, we'll lose a lot of footage. The other night, we actually lost about an hour worth of footage um, just because we recorded for too long. And I felt horrible about it, but apparently we were at the one location way too long. Um, so you're going to keep this guy horizontal just like this. You're going to be watching it, so that way you can kind of see what's going on. The slower the movements, the better. It's already recording, and I started the recording now just so everybody has the direction again at the beginning of the video as to how to watch it. So again, even when I tell you to stop it, you're going to hit this red square. It'll turn to a circle. You'll tap it again, but make sure when you start it, you're in the same position. Otherwise, the video gets all flippy after sure. I splice everything together. And then you guys have an upside down video. And I normally joke that, you know, then I have to give out your phone number, but I'm sure everybody here already has it. Your finger is covering <laughs> yep. the lens, just so Oh, you know. sorry. It's on the left hand side. You just Oh, it it's on the left hand. Oh, sorry. Treat it just like a cell phone. Just remember those buttons, right? Yep, you got it. There we go. Ooh, cool. Yeah, you're right. Gotta do slow. Yeah, nice and slow. The slower the better. Look, you can see the motor underneath the, look, you see the heat from the motor, look, yeah, but the rest of it, the rest of it's not, see the rest of it's cold, look, but the, the motor there. So because that'll be the only camera we have out tonight, um, I'll just give a warning now on the camera. People don't like to be filmed because they have no idea what the hell we're doing out here. And sure. They don't like their cars to be filmed. Ooh, yeah, okay. So if I do like an Andy's coming, you're just going to pretend like you're holding a cell phone because you are. So spirit boxes, we're going to be using a couple of different types Ooh, of spirit boxes sweet. tonight. So this one in particular, if you guys watch the TV shows, which sounds like some of you actually do. Does yeah. everybody watch the yeah. TV shows? Yeah. 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 So if I'm speaking in too layman of terms, just remember I get 6 to 106 on this tour. I try to keep things as basic as possible. But this is going to sweep through all of the FM radio stations at a quick rate. You can already see the numbers moving because I've already started it. So it's normally just the white noise on your TV shows, and then they tell you what they think they heard in the middle of it from a disembodied voice. We're going to be doing that in real time. On top of this, is going to we're using a different method because none of you are trained to listen to white noise for two hours. Somebody's going to fall asleep along with the history. Yeah, I'll always give you the clue, the cues for that. Um, you're going to try to do two things. Uh, first, I already told you, like, no people, no cars, except for us. Like, y'all paid sure. to be recorded. You didn't know it, but you did. Sure, so, sorry. <laughs> the reason I actually want somebody in the frame especially one of us, is because we're going to be the warmest thing out here. I know it's a humid night for us, but we're still going to be 97 degrees where the ambient temperature is what? What's the bottom number? 80.8. 80.8. So we're about 80 to 82 degrees average. So again, 97 is going to be warmer. That's going to give us the array of color on the screen. Much easier to find cold spots when you have an array of color. The other thing you're going to try to do is keep the sky out. If you noticed already that that blue dot automatically goes up to the sky looking mm -hmm. for a surface. Mm -hmm no point there's no surface on the sky sure so again some places that'll be impossible just do your best sure so um sure we're going to talk more about your motion sensor at the next location because i do want to get us moving along um yours is probably as we're walking to the next space which is literally like right across the street go ahead and turn that thing on and you know like right. unmute it so that way you get used to listening to it what's your last three words that popped up um, hurt was the first one okay. that came um friend point hurt then point lion friend I like Mark too, because that could possibly be, a, you know. Yeah, Mark was over there. Yeah, his teammates come up all the time, and the coach really has been coming up a lot too. I'm not even going to give you that name, just in case it actually pops up. And I'm not talking just his first name. I'm talking his full name mm -hmm. will pop up. So the first name will be heard on another spirit box, and you'll get the last name or vice versa. It happens all the time. Sure. So, um, but yeah, I like Mark. I don't know who it is yet, but I'm going to look into it. Um, for some odd reason, Lion is sticking out to me. 
but go ahead and circle back and we'll kind of see what goes on. So let's go deep dive into much further history than football players and ponies. Is lion like right? animal okay. lion or lion like not telling the truth lion? Lion like, lion an, animal. like an animal lion. Animal like the king lion. of the jungle. Yeah, that was okay. the word. Why your hair is blue, is honey? Like Mine? Her hair is not going to have the same temperature as her body. Ah. Because, like, your hair is not blue and <laughs> just hers. I don't know about that. <laughs> Alright, so circle up. This one is a, is a pretty prominent place, so welcome to a parking lot. I know. <laughs> it, it, it happens. So, uh, unfortunately for us, there's a lot of cars parked in the front, so first and foremost, we will not be going in between any vehicles. And if somebody's going to their vehicles, obviously, David, you're going to be just acting like a cell phone holder. Um, so some people understand, some people don't. If I was a car thief, that camera would be the first thing I would have. You've already pointed out that you can see that the motor was hot. So if the car's been sitting for a long time, the car thief's going to want to take a look at that one and see why it's been sitting there. So, yeah. Just saying. Not to I give never, anybody any uh, ideas. Yeah, never, but, I never would have thought that. But that would be my first, first tool I would have. Mm -hmm. So what is this mm -hmm. space? Uh, well, spirit boxes, I am not going to be giving you questions like what color is George Washington's white horse? Like what I told you over there with the big red barn. You're going to get the answers from your spirit boxes. This is the first space where I'll withhold information purposely. So this space used to be the Eliza and Charles Pinckney Mansion. It actually sat in the front of this space. Eliza's garden was lined up with Five Church Restaurant and came all the way across. And we are standing in the servant and slave quarters for the home. So that kind of gives you the layout. So who the heck were these people? They had a son named Charles. They had a nephew named Charles. That's three Charleses, because remember the husband was named Charles as well. See why I always look for a secondary clue? We need to know who the hell we're talking to. So the son and the nephew were signers of the Constitution for South Carolina, which is a big deal for South Carolinians, especially if you're from here and you're native. But I hate politics more than anybody here. We're going to move on. So... I just bring that up because if I don't, it usually shows up on another spirit box somewhere, and you would think I would leave it out purposely, but it's almost disrespectful. We're going to talk about Eliza. People coming through, act casual. David. Sorry. <laughs> I know it's fascinating stuff. Um, so, Eliza married Charles at a young age according to today's standards. So if you guys are going to ask her how old she was when she got married, it is not going to be like 12 and 14, like the colonial times that she came from. It'll be according to today's standards. The only reason I bring this up is because Charles, her husband, was over double her age. It was an anomaly back then, and it would be an anomaly now. Like, it's a pretty big age gap between the two of them. So, she married him because her father, over in England, thought he was dying, and he wanted to see all of his kids one last time. He's trying to bring them all home to England, while Liza was living right here in Charleston, and fell in love with Charles. So, she stayed put, because she didn't think her father was dying. She got married in 1744. She didn't actually marry Charles for a green card or citizenship because we're not even a country yet. She did marry him out of love, and even after his death, she did remain a widow. But her father didn't die right away, so she was right. But the dad starts sending over gifts. Do you understand that? No, but we at least have it on regular audio, so maybe you guys, we can decipher it out later and see what it was. But that was definitely uh -huh. not a radio chatter. Right. Yeah, it sounded different. Than the yeah, other it's so. reacting. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool. So I need to know, like, you're definitely going to be getting the trigger object. The Let's see if something's going on so, around him. Where was I? Oh, Dad starts sending her gifts, right? To this space. One of those gifts happened to be the plant seeds of indigo. 
indigo is a plant that makes blue dye that makes it blue jeans blue. None of us are wearing it today. That's awesome. I normally have at least one example. Um, but at any rate, we, that's how we still use it. She didn't know what to do with these seeds when she got them, so she actually had to learn from her slaves on how to keep it cultivated. It's not always hot down here. You guys live in North Carolina, you know that. So once mm -hmm. she had it figured out, she moves it to a plantation, calls her dad and says, rice plantations are going downhill. We can make a killing with this indigo. Now we have an international businesswoman during colonial times. So that's her business. That's the boring history of her. Let's talk about the weird shit because that's why everybody's here. So, right, Christina? She's like, yeah, give me the oh, weird yeah. stuff. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. She's all over this. There's two different Elizas. Charles had two wives named Eliza back to back. The oh. first wife, Eliza, dies in January of 1744. In May of 1744, he marries the one I just told you about that planted the indigo. Five months later. How crazy is that? It's just saying. Ironically, both Eliza's have a maiden name that starts with the letter L. If you want to figure out which Eliza we're dealing with, ask for the maiden name. We already have the first name because it showed up over there. That's why I said, oh, it's getting started already. We're only one block away. Things do bleed over a little bit. Um, and the fact that we're getting that many voices coming through, I'm excited for your device. Hearing now. voices, it's just like hard to decipher what it's actually. That's why I said only 10 to 12 things that you're going to hear is going to be discernible where you're like, yes, it did say Eliza, or whatever the word is. Um, wait, where was I? So Eliza, oh, the second wife. So ask her a maiden name. You can ask what happened to the mansion. It's not here anymore. Um, that's a pretty big deal. If you get an answer, obviously you can ask what year that happened. And we've gotten it plenty of times in the past, depending on what they want to talk about tonight. The children. I told you there's at least one. There are more. You can ask how many and what their names are, but that's it. Reason being, there's a tragedy among those kids. Don't ruin the tour for the rest of your family. If we start poking the bear about that tragedy, all activity will stop, including even the little tiny EMF readings that he's getting. So, I've seen it go down to zero, and that's it. Like, that's the end of whatever we're doing. Eliza's death is where she's really open. You can ask her how old she was when she died, what she died from, where she's buried, and what U.S. president was a pallbearer at her funeral. These are all very specific things. Might not always get a direct answer. Sometimes it might be a clue to wrap around. You know, that kind of thing. We might just get their initials. We never know what's actually going to happen. So I'm gonna have us all kind of spread out in this lot. Um, the cars, just so you know who's they, who they actually belong to, from employees down here. A lot of times they come down here to sit in their car for their break. It's probably what's going on in that white truck up there. So we're just gonna stay clear of that white truck. Um, nice slow movements out of the camera. Um, obviously, you're going to be listening very closely, but I'm going to keep you back, Aiden, just so I can show you how to use that REM pod. Um, oh, the trigger object. So, you guys know what a trigger object is? You guys all watch the TV shows? Sounds somewhat yes. familiar. So, what do you think my trigger object is? Indigo. Indigo. There exactly you go. right. Yeah. So, that was going to go to you, just because I'm super curious. Um, so, with that, like, it's the indigo seeds that actually make blue dye. It's in a small, tiny vial that's glued to that card very hard to come by. Um, I, I, I think it took like three or four weeks for it to come in and it was expensive. Like I was surprised at how expensive it was. Um, so I'm not talking like hundreds of dollars. I'm talking like 16 bucks. I'm like, like really 16 bucks for a small vial of indigo? Just so I can use it as a trigger object? Okay, I guess I'm writing that one off. So it's for business, right? Sure. Um, so just hang on to it. You can talk about it if you want. See if you get a response out of it. Um, but yeah, that's me to give that to you just because we're hearing weird voices coming out of your spirit box tonight, which is exciting for me. Again, that thing's still relatively new, so we're still testing things out. So we'll see what happens with it. Get to stay behind. Everybody else, spread out. See what we got going on. But yeah, let me show you how to use that thing. So, any other readings that I need to write down before? Just like Can you show yourself? We come in peace. Just doing over here. I'm just looking for some imagery. What year did you die? Are you here with us now? Do you like the trigger object? Would you like to touch the trigger object?
Do you want to say something to Zachary? Maybe his mom? Do you think his mom's pretty? Do you like Zachary? You think he's handsome? Yeah. You think Zach's handsome, don't you? Yeah. How about Aiden? You you think Aiden's handsome too? Yeah? Yeah, I bet you do. It's okay. You think I'm handsome? Yep. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I wish I could see you. That's great, man. Do you, you, you think uh, Zachary's mom is pretty? Yeah. <laughs> no, she likes Zach. She doesn't like mom. She likes Zach. You like Zach, don't you? You think he's handsome. You think I'm handsome. Thank you. <laughs> Said something. How old were you when you died? Do you stay here? Do you leave here? Is anyone else here with you? Are you by yourself? Do you like the indigo? What was what was it? Indigo? What was it? What did he bring? Indigo. Indigo. You like the indigo? Indigo seeds. Oh, you like the indigo seeds? Good for you. What what other What other seeds do you like? You like apple seeds? There's Aiden. Say hey to Aiden. Say hey Aiden. She likes you and Zach. She thinks y'all are handsome. You like Aiden, don't you? He's a good looking fellow. No, but uh, I was asking some questions around Zachary, and he was getting some feedback. Uh, he told me what he heard over here. Um, I asked him if she thought Zach was handsome. He got a yes. <laughs> if they thought Aiden was handsome, he got a yes. And then ask him if they thought that Zachary's mom was pretty and. You're asking too many yes or no questions. <laughs> oh, that's right. You did say that. <laughs> that's right. You did say that. Ask them what other seeds they like besides. <laughs> what, they that's said in, just said fall. Indigo seed. <laughs> what did they say? Indigo seed? Yeah, indigo seed. Yeah, it's indigo. Yeah. She wasn't. I mean, that was just their cash crop. I mean, obviously, she was a botanist of some sort. So, I mean, she planted a lot of things. Sure. You sure. Know, she experimented because she was very smart about it. You know, right. one of those times a reading woman was a big deal. Right. So, I mean, she came from a pretty prominent family from England. 
she knew how to read and she knew how to study on her own. She right. was left here by her family at the age of 16. My goodness. To handle three plantations on her own. My word. Man. Yeah. Wow. Botanist. Let me go ask her some botany questions. There you go. No botany questions? <laughs> Very few, but I'll try, yeah. Wow, that's great. You were a botanist. That's awesome. I bet you're really smart. I bet you're super smart. I bet you're really smart. Did uh, you clone? Did you clone? Did you clone plants? Said she was a botanist. Did you grow? Did you grow hemp? Did you grow hemp? Did you grow marijuana? What was your favorite thing to grow? How many people worked for you on your plantations? They said you had three plantations. How many people worked for you? No, they like Aiden. Mine just said Jackson, Caroline Jackson, that's Cece's sister. What kind of music did you like? What was your favorite book? And as cool as, as your device is giving us a lot of greens, I'm going to pull us to the back just based on we're not hearing a whole lot from what's going on. And one of the phrases was kind of negative, so I want to kind of explain oh. that oh. and kind of tell you guys what's going on. Uh-oh, it didn't like something. I'm sorry if we upset you. It wasn't on purpose. So... A couple of weeks ago, I'm out here. Let's go ahead and turn off that REM pod because that's just distracting for me. Yeah, that's a little white button in the back. It was still blocked with the antenna pushed in. A couple of weeks ago, um, my group's come, I brought my group here and somebody came up to me and said, we don't want you here. And then the next night, they said, you are not welcome. And then tonight, you heard something along the lines like, don't come back. Don't come back. So, the only, one of the few disembodied voices that I actually have on a regular recording, which is actually came from your recording, not radio chatter it said just leave us alone that was about a year ago um and you have to imagine i have the software to be able to analyze this stuff that one actually went over 11 different radio stations wow so like that that's a pretty like dark saying so the fact that you're not giving me anything prominent your word list is, is kind of light over here i'm going to get us the answers and move us on pretty quickly just because it's i don't want to say we're not welcome here but i'm going to take the hint kind of thing so sure. we did get the word help um, out of your box, which which is weird. We commonly hear that out of that box. Um, so we'll kind of see what goes on. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to collect your indigo, just so I don't forget it. Again, took a few weeks, 16 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those pieces. And I, I keep forgetting that I even have it. So you guys lucked out because I actually remember. So 
Uh, let's talk about, I guess first and foremost, what actually happened to the mansion. It's picture pages time, everybody, so everybody kind of has a gist of who the hell these people were. Just pull out a tablet from time to time. I'll go around the whole group, that way you guys don't have to huddle. Um, so whenever I bring this guy out to kind of explain things a little bit further, again, I'm all about giving you guys as much information as possible. So, this is Eliza Lucas Pinkney. This is the second wife, the one who planted all the indigo. Notice the blue dress, obviously signifying the indigo. Um, the first wife, her maiden name was Lamb. So Lamb and Lucas were obviously the maiden names we were looking for. Now the word lion, I bring that up because a couple of months back, I don't remember how far long ago, but we actually heard the lion and the lamb on the radio while we were standing here. So that's why I was like, oh, maybe we'll actually get lion and lamb again. Because lamb, and it's expelled the exact same way. Um, as far as the mansion goes, so as soon as this thing wants to cooperate, this is exactly where you're standing. This is wow. one of the few photographs we have of the mansion. Oh, wow. This is after the Great Fire of 1861, December 11th to be exact. So sometimes we'll get the full dates, 12-11-61. Uh, but again, this is exactly where you're standing right now. Um, it's just unfortunate that it's a parking lot at this point. So other tour guides are going to tell you about whatever great fire happened in whatever year that, that it occurred in, because that's usually what it's named after. This is as big as the fire was that destroyed the mansion. You're standing mm. on the green dot mm. on the right-hand side, if you can see that. Mm. So it literally went from one side of the peninsula to the other. Like, this was a giant fire. Mm. So that kind of gives you the, the caliber of like what this actually was. <laughs> Of course, it, like right yeah. down the middle. Yeah, divide. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. We'll see if something else pops up around that. It is relevant, but ask Alex. Oh, <laughs> I don't know who the hell Alex is. Let's get into the children. So this is the first night I actually put some extra pictures on here, so you guys can see what the heck some of the kids look like. Um, if I have one, nope. No, I have one. Um, so I guess we'll start with uh, you already know about Charles, right? He was signed of the Constitution, so we'll move on from him. The next child was Thomas. This is Thomas Pinckney. The things I look for around him, um, he actually fought in a Revolutionary War battle, the Battle of Camden. So the Battle of Camden, he was shot in his left leg and captured by the British. These are all relevant terms that I would normally get wrapped around Thomas. After he was released, it left him on a cane the rest of his days. Notice that his left leg is not being seen in the video, in this uh, photograph, caning. So again, that cane is something that will normally pop up on your spirit boxes as well, if Thomas is actually here speaking to us. The next child is the one I asked you not to poke the bear with. The reason being is because his name is Baby George. You can already probably tell where this is going. Baby George does not have a headstone or a grave. I'll explain here in just a moment. But Baby George, his death certificate has the same month and year in the birth and the death column. We don't know if he was days old or if he was weeks old. If I had to take my guess, he normally didn't name a child until they were baptized or christened. Depending, I mean, they were Anglican. I don't know enough about that religion to be able to signify what they would actually do. But he did get named George after Eliza's father. So, that would make her, her father, by the way, George Lucas, in case you were paying attention to the maiden name. So, <laughs> yes, he got my joke. So I can't normally say that all the time because not everybody gets that joke. Uh, but at any rate, so my theory on baby George, is based on the time frame and why he doesn't have a headstone or a grave, is that they would have kept the baby mummified right here in the home, waiting for the mother to pass. So that way he could be buried with mom. It's gonna get even weirder when I tell you about Eliza's death. One last child, though, before we do that. Harriet, the only daughter. Now, you kept hearing the word girls. Somebody kept hearing girls. Yeah. There's only one. Her name was Harriet. She married in Ori. Now, Myrtle Beach is in Ori County. That's two and a half hours from here, north. Kind of gives you an idea of where she lived. It wouldn't have been a two and a half hour car ride for Eliza. No cars. So, instead, they wrote letters back and forth. If Harriet shows up here, we normally get things wrapped around letter writing. So, ink, quill, paper, you know, those type of things will pop up. Um, let's get into Eliza's death, because that's where things are going to get a little funky. Let's go ahead and stop your video. Let's yeah, start sure. recording. Kind of give that camera. So you guys are in luck. I'm actually studying this for my next episode of the podcast, um, based on where we are and what we're standing on. So um, do me a favor, Nathan. Can you just put your device close to the ground and tell me if you get a reading on your red screen? Anything above a 1.1? 1.2 now. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. 1.5. Yeah. It's like slowly rising. Oh. 1.2. Should I set it on the ground? Yeah. Let him just set it down. See what happens. Someone walks by, we'll pick it up. Oh wow. Set it. So we're going to 
it back down. I haven't seen it do that once. It's just been jumping between numbers. Charlestown walls used to be. Charles City used to be called Charlestown, the walled city. We're standing on one of the very first streets we ever had. People lived here. So that's why I'm asking you for names, because I do have the full list of residents of everybody that's ever lived here. It's not a lengthy list, and it's not like it's a whole lot of people lived here at one time. We're talking like two to six people max. The name Alexandria, um, I know for certain that there's an Alexander that lived down here, um, but the names I commonly hear are Benjamin and John. It sounds like very common names, but John will give us his last name from time to time, which is Johnson. So again, John Johnson. That happens about every six to seven weeks. Now, unfortunately for us tonight, we're in like week one, week two. I still can't pinpoint exactly when everything starts happening, but I can tell you like there's a good five to seven day span where everybody gives me the name Benjamin or John. So again, it happens all the time in that six to seven week loop. Do I have anything significant about these two gentlemen? Nope, just a great example of the stone tape theory. And I keep getting the same things over and over again. Now that I know I have a small rating on here, of, what was that, 8 to 11.7, and it grew slowly, now i got to look up why it grew slowly. So again, very interesting space. The other interesting thing about this location is because before people lived here, the Freemasons had a Masonic Lodge here, which is why they call it Lodge Alley. That's Lodge Alley in behind you, so every hotel has a haunted whatever. Um, but the Freemasons will get terms wrapped right around them as well. So Freemasons, Masons, Illuminati loves to show up on your... Know, the recording of it. But first off, who the hell sang the word Illuminati on the radio? And that's a lot of syllables to be coming out, as I'm sure you guys are all going to find out tomorrow morning. Second, I only hear it when we're inside the space. So again, I'm not going to go into conspiracy theories, but it's the other night, uh, I want to say sometime last week, um, I was talking, as soon as I mentioned Freemasons, the word symbols showed up on the word list, like immediately. So it's kind of like, a, all right, we have somebody else here. I don't know if we had any other names, but I want to say there is a tailor on there, last name. Um, and then as far as Alexandria, I don't know if that one's going to be specific enough, but there will be an Alexander, and that is going to give me enough to be able to give you the link to be verify what's actually going on here. There's not a whole lot of other things that go on here, other than the fact that this is a paranormal theory that you're standing on. I linger here on purpose to tell you guys all of these things, because I want to see what's going to come up on the recordings. So again, it's not a place where we can ask questions and hopefully get answers. We're waiting for something to actually occur, and it's normally caught through the media right here. I have got things on the thermal imaging camera, and I normally capture capture a few orbs when I'm using the IR camera. So we're not using that tonight, obviously, and I'm actually waiting on uh, my, the, my upgrade that I just purchased just broke, like after two weeks of use. So I had to contact them this morning. I've been on the phone all day with them trying to get this thing. Like, I just need an exchange as quick as possible. The camera's amazing, but it just won't take a charge. Um, but at any rate, so this is a really cool space. I love bringing you guys down here. But the next space is another alley that we're going to, but I can't take you all the way through it. The reason being is because I've been kicked out. So you guys all have the kids loads and gadgets and blanky lights and stuff, and it is considered residential at the end. So again, I don't take you down there because it's a very popular ghost tour space, and it's not fair for my 10 to be revolving around 20 to 60 people of them telling a very different version of the story. We're going to be outside of the alley. We're going to get some footage of the alley. Um, I obviously tell the story a lot different because we're ghost hunting. We're not just camping and telling ghost stories around a campfire. So I tell it with much more specific detail. So I do want you listening in very closely on our way there. Let me know what you hear. Um, after we you could probably listen to that on the way to the space, as we said, we'll be moving. And of course, let me know what's going on. David, as we exit, you'll stop your video because we're cutting through a neighborhood to get to the next space. So 
So we're allowed to cut through, we just can't stop and you know, do our normal stuff. So um, take note of the houses that are around over there, they're pretty cool. Um, if you have questions about way, the, some of the architecture set up down here, I'm happy to try to explain based on like the skinniness of the house and that kind of thing. So we'll go up to the next space and we'll find out what we got going on. Do you have another reading going on? No, I was just trying to see if every time I brought a question to the ground it went up. And so far it's done that. So, so far, with the readings you have had, I'm sure you noticed like they were very quick. Like it went up to like 4.5, then down to like 0.1. Mm -hmm. But that grew yeah. very slow. And it's doing it every time I put it close to the ground. Excuse us. Sorry, sir. You didn't say boo tonight, man. Uh, I hope you're on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the interesting thing for me is that once you got some gray, it just yeah. grew. Let's try it again. Set it down and jump up like a whole point. That should be giving us any. It's a brick. Yeah. And allegedly, there's no magnetite in it. It's obviously what it creates technical fields. Sorry, this is too much. walking by, obviously you want to drop it. So, any words that you heard along the way? No, but I think it's making noise. It's good, it's making noise. I got the name Melissa earlier. She also and told protection. me she heard Protect. Protect and Melissa, both in Lodge Alley? Yeah. So, this is Philadelphia Alley behind me. It used to be called Duelers Alley. Mm -hmm. This is where the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. So, the reason why I have this over here is, you know, obviously it's pretty empty now, but I'd like for you guys to see the length of it, because that's going to be relative later on. We all tell the story of one duel, but again, like I said earlier, I tell it a little bit differently just because you're ghost hunting. You know, it's not a, you know, campfire story. I thought I heard sir, eight. I heard eight. Very interesting. Let's see if anything pops up around that. Yeah, keep that thing running. Um, so, here's how the story goes. I, I, like I said, I got a little bit more specific detail than the other tour. A doctor moves down here from Rhode Island. His name is Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. He moves down here because his fiance Amanda, just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. She's an attorney. He's helping her out with his cash. The attorney thinks the doctor is just after her money. So she, he tells her to get rid of the doctor. He moves to Charleston to prove that he's not just after her money. So, as the coachman's bringing him into town, the coachman set him up to be robbed and killed. I didn't hear it either. I heard so a voice. It's a clear, clear word, voice, but I didn't understand. Okay. It's definitely, I mean, with the audio, hopefully you'll be able to decipher some of it. Because, I mean, I got the regular recording going. So the doctor's coming into town, the coachman brought him in, set him up to be robbed and killed. It wasn't a very good start to his stay in Charleston. So somebody walking by with the name Ralph Isaacs. Now I stop on Ralph just because Ralph has the same initials as where the doctor came from. Rhode Island, Ralph Isaacs. R.I. shows up here all the time, but we always need a secondary clue to know who the hell it belongs to, because those are the two main characters, Dr. Ladd and Ralph. So, Dr. Ladd and Ralph become friends, but the doctor's practice starts to take off. He's making a lot of money. A man is going to be moving down soon. The doctor becomes known as the Whistling Doctor. So every, it's a very cliched ghost story, I know, but it actually works here. Every haunted city you will ever visit in the future has a cliched ghost of a Whistling Doctor or a Whistling Ghost somewhere. Ours just happens to be a doctor. Ralph and the doctor go see plays together, but they can't sit next to each other because the doctor's making more money now. So he gets better seats. That's just kind of how things go. On the way home, they're talking about this play that they went to go see William III. Now, I know we had Will earlier, but that was way too far away from this space. But they're arguing over the actress. The doctor thought she was fantastic, Ralph not so much. The argument gets a little heated when Ralph starts insulting the doctor's fiance, Amanda, back home in Rhode Island. Obviously, they go their separate ways, pretty angry. Ralph is so angry, he puts an ad in the newspaper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. The doctor sees the ad, rebuttals with, let's go to Dueler's Alley, somebody's gonna die. Let's get this all settled. So they come down, they take their 10 paces, they turn, the doctor pointed his gun in the air and he shot. He did not want to kill his friend. 
He just wanted to make a point, that he had the courage and bravery to show up to the fight, and he's willing to forgive. However, Rolf has his one shot. Sorry, David. Puts it right in the kneecap, on the doctor, so the doctor doesn't die either. He drops to the ground, his friends pick him up, carry him back home to 59 Church Street, where he dies 10 days later after refusing the medical treatment. Mm. He's a doctor. He probably tried to bleed it out himself. So, a lot of very specific details in that, but the ghost story part of this, they say as you walk through the alley, you can actually hear the whistles from the doctor. Now, even coming over here, on your spirit box, Christina, we'll actually hear songs with whistling in it mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, the new Maroon 5 song, like the Moves Like Jagger, has whistling mm -hmm. in it. Oh, mm -hmm. that just played a second ago. I don't know. I should be listening to the song. <laughs> yeah, the song lyrics, all that kind of stuff. Um, the Guns N' Roses song, Patience, has whistling in it. Mm -hmm. So we get that all the time. The word whistle will show up here. So I want you to keep in mind, if you're going to go down there on your own with, you know, obviously without me, the tour guide, um, turn on your voice recorders, listen to it later, see if you get any whistles. But keep in mind that all the locals know the story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland or Queen Street on the other side, we all throw a whistle down the alley. So I do it every night. We're going to end right up there. My garage is right there. I have to pass it in order to, you know, but I throw a whistle down there every single night. So let's talk about why I got thrown out, because Aiden, like, you, you like, really, like, jumped up when I said I got kicked out of there when I said that in Lodge Alley. He's like, how did you get in trouble, man? So, the end of this alley is residential, and this alley didn't always come all the way through, which means there was a wall, just probably about maybe 75 feet into the alley. So, with that, the other side of the bricks on the other side of the alley are older. I used to always show them off, because those are sun-dried bricks from slave children. Yes, there's a full handprint from a slave child, as well as plenty of fingerprints from when they had to literally turn those bricks. Property, and I swear I heard Scooch. Scooch? Yeah, that's my name. That's his nickname. That's his nickname from high school. Scooch. Hmm. Did you bring somebody with you? Interesting. How would they know that? If, if you guys brought somebody with you, it happens all the time. I'd be interested to see if your name shows up somewhere. So, I won't ask personal questions. I mean, I know this is your family and all, but I'm not going to sit here and ask personal questions if you lost somebody and stir up a bunch of emotion. So, we'll just see what else happens. Um, kind of take it from there. We'll call out a first clue. If somebody really wants to come through, probably call out your name. Wow. Okay, and it can show up anywhere. So, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to wait for this couple to pass before I tell you the rest of how I got booted out of here. So not everybody wants to hear that. You can come on through the middle. How are you? Mm. That brick I just mentioned. Everybody likes to put a spirit box or an EMF mover near it, hoping that somebody's gonna come through. I treat it the same way I do a grave. That kid's not staring at that brick in the afterlife. However, one night, November 26th of 2020, everybody did exactly that, and they all huddled around that one brick, waiting for something to happen. I looked outside a gentleman's dining room window, and he was not happy with my group, with their blinky lights and loud spirit boxes standing around this brick. And I'm in the wrong area. He was right, I was in the wrong. I was the new guy on the block still, brand new tour, you know, still learning the ropes of what tourism and where I'm allowed to go and where I'm not. Um, so that was November 26th. My daughter thought it was great because dad's getting screamed at, you know, because she was on the tour that night. November 27th of that year was Thanksgiving, so I did not have a tour. So the next day I got a phone call from the tourism office asking me to go down halfway, which is where we're allowed to go, or reroute my tour. So I decided I'm going to reroute. You know, I'm the new guy, I'm trying to stay out of everybody's way while I'm learning things out here and I take them up to where we're going to go tonight. I didn't tell my folks what we're going to be discussing, but I had to wing it because I didn't even believe the story. Like, I'm like, I hate pirates. I'm a vampire guy. I don't want to talk about pirates, but I was like, we'll kind of see what happens. Before we left, somebody heard the name Anne on a spear box. And I told you, I didn't tell them what we were going to be discussing. It was going to be Anne Bonnie, the female pirate. So we already had uh. her name come through. When we get there and I told what I knew at the time, which wasn't much, we were just basically investigating, somebody else hears the number 300. I don't know what 300 means to the story, but I wrote it down, went home and researched it the next morning, like I'm going to do for y'all with your stuff, and found out that we were there on November 28th of 2020, and Bonnie's uh, trial for piracy was November 28th of 1720. We were there on the exact 300 year anniversary of her pirate trial. How about that? So I was like, dag nabbit, now I got to learn about pirates, and I've read more <laughs> books on pirates than I have ever read on vampires. So, the, that last space where we're going, it is a hit or miss. She's not always there. We're rolling the dice to see if she's going to be there at the same time. 
But what we're going to do now is we're going to go up to St. Philip's Church and Cemetery and kind of see what your spirit boxes are telling me along the way. Sorry, Aiden, you're still kind of out of the game. You might want to grab her earbud so if you can, because um, that last space is where we're really going to need that device to see what's actually going on. Um, but yeah, continue listening. Philadelphia Alley over that courtyard that we were just discussing, there's a gate right in the middle of it. The reason that gate is there is because it was for the loser of the duel. If anybody actually lost, meaning they died, so they shot, there's a shortcut to get to the cemetery behind me. Remember, the alley didn't go all the way through. Otherwise, it'd have to go all the way down to the end of that alley and come back down around So on Church Street. That's a long trek to be carrying dead weight, literally. So they made a shortcut so they can go celebrate the winter quicker. So this is normally a very popular area, just so you guys know. It's another reason why I like to do th you know, like keep mm -hmm. things open seven days a week. Um, but go ahead and have a seat, and let's tell you guys start telling me what you guys heard, and then I'll tell you why every other ghost tour loves to stop at that cemetery if you don't give me anything relative to any other story around here. So there's a famous picture from this cemetery. There is, and I'm going to cover that. So go ahead and have a seat. You can, yeah, probably stop that recording because we're sure. going to show it here for a few. So are we going with Thursday or Thursday? I would say Thursday. Interesting. Five, six, seven. Already? Already? Anything else come up across the street? Yeah. Alright, so let's get into why we're... Uh, your words I don't have to write down because it's doing it for me. So. <laughs> yeah. That's why I love that one so much. Um, we're going to be discussing, first off, this little building in the front with the crosses on it. You guys know that those are not crosses, those are earthquake bolts. So ah. basically the, the gist of that is that they are turnbuckles. In the event we have another earthquake, like what we did in 1886, you can turn those turnbuckles and it's supposed to straighten the building back up. Hmm. It's a great idea, it just doesn't work. So the reason I bring these up is because it's the first set of earthquake bolts that Charleston put in um, because of the earthquake. So I want to say those were put in in 1890 because this is the first earthquake, the oldest government building in South Carolina. It was finished in 1713. It's the gunpowder magazine. It served in seven different wars and a rebellion. We talked about the Charlestown walls earlier. The parking garage, where that is sitting right now, that is where the wall came up. It went up Cumberland, past the powder magazine, about a block, and then started going south towards the battery. It locked it into the corners on purpose. It furthers the way that they can get away from the water in case a revolutionary warship or a pirate ship was coming in and it was going to try to attack it. It's going to have a hard time going through the 35 inch thick walls. That's how thick they are. We're going to pretend that the cannonball actually goes through and blows up the gunpowder. There's sand in the roof that's supposed to go up with the explosion and then fall to put out the fire of the gunpowder. That's another great idea that doesn't work. That sand is still there because sand does not disintegrate. So it has been there for how many years? 300 and Nine years? That's a long damn time for sand to be sitting up on top of that roof. So we had another uh, gunpowder magazine closer to the battery. It did get attacked. The sand went up at the building burned to the ground. This one's just never been attacked. We're here because this place is what I call a familiar, kind of like using that trigger object um, that we use at the Pinkney Mansion site. This is the same time period that Anne Bonnie came to Charleston. This building took 10 years to build. So 1703 to 1713, the story actually begins right in the middle of it. Does that sound like our government? Ten years, small building? No, not at all. So, 1708, follow me, there's a lot of twists. I'm going to ask you to mute just so I can stay, because there's a lot going on in this story. Um, so, 1708, a young lady moves here from Ireland. Her name is Anne Cormack. She moves here with her father and his mistress. The mistress is her mother. Is everybody with me so far? Okay, mm -hmm. see a couple of head nods. The three of them are running away from his wife. No looks of shock, really? <laughs> okay, moving on. They land in Georgetown, just north of here, in between us and Myrtle Beach, just so you guys know. Dad buys a plantation, mom dies pretty quickly. That means he has to send young Anne down here to buy, or sell anything from the plantation to keep things afloat. Anne back home in Ireland was said to be kind of a badass, that she actually killed one of her servants when she was only 10 or 12 years old wow. with a knife to the belly. Like, pretty hardcore chick. Keep that mentality in your brain as we go through this story. We're gonna fast forward. This building's done in uh, 1713. Pirates are coming through town in 1715. Anna Stokes, she's about 16, 17 years old at this time. She's gonna fall in love. First guy, yes, I'm gonna keep tally because there's quite a few. Guy number one turns out to be James Bonney. I can already see where this is going. I already mentioned her name several times. Dad doesn't prove because he's a filthy pirate. They run away to Jamaica. They get married. Anne Cormack becomes Anne Bonney, the most famous female pirate of the golden age. He's fine. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll take that from you then. I'll try to reattach it later. Um, so, 
this is not the Captain Jack Sparrow that she was hoping for. When she gets down there, this guy is a privateer, which basically means he's a spy for the British and a coward in her eyes. So, a few years later, she falls in love again. This guy's name is John Rackham, guy number two, a.k.a. Calico Jack. We're going to refer to him as Jack through the rest of the story because, yes, this is the same guy, original guy, that they based Captain Jack Sparrow off of. He has his own ship, and Anne wants to be part of it. You cannot have a girl on the crew because girls curse pirate ships. So he makes a deal. You can dress like a guy, you can look like the crew, on the crew, but you're going to be a female in my quarters. She's okay with this because Dad used to hide her as a boy back home in Ireland and keep her away from his wife. And she's like, whatever, I'm a pirate, let's go. But we're all adults here. We put two and two together. Two adults in the captain's quarters. She's eventually going to get pregnant. You can't have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. Somebody's going to figure out that she's a girl. They drops her off in Cuba. Go have the baby. These are friends of mine. They'll help you out. Come back later. We'll figure it out. She has the baby. Returns with no child. We have no idea what happens to this baby. She's also dressed like a female. This makes Jack pretty angry because now all the men are going to find out there was a female on the ship. To make him even more mad, she's going to go flirting with the crew that he just captured that's being held captive down below deck. Because that's what Anne does. Guy number three. Guy number three turns out to be a female dressed like a guy to be part of the pirate crew that Calico Jack was captured. Now we have two females on the same ship, dressed like men, to be pirates, basically. This young lady's name is Mary Reed, and she convinces Mary to become part of the crew. They can become friends, possibly lovers, we'll never know for certain, and the British find out where they are. They send their entire fleet of ships to come take on one pirate ship. It's only Anne and Mary fighting back with their one-bullet flintlocks because everybody else is too drunk down below deck to come up and fight. Obviously, two ladies that don't know how to use cannons trying to fight back are not going to be taking down a fleet of ships. So as they're being arrested, she looks at her bow and her captain, Jack, says, you should have fought like a man instead of being hanged like a dog. The word dog is very prominent here. It comes through all the time. The judge wants to see the two men that fought back so valiantly after he's already tried and hung Calico Jack and the drunken pirates that would not come up and fight. The two ladies go in front. They reveal their gender, hoping to save themselves. And he doesn't care that they're female. He's still going to hang them because they're pirates. We plead our bellies was the last thing they said, basically claiming to be pregnant. You cannot hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It's illegal. So he sends them both back to jail, delays the hanging. Dad is still here in Charleston with all of his Irish money. He bails out Anne, brings her back home. She remarries. It's husband number two, but guy number four has four kids and dies at the age of 84. I know. All of my stories end abruptly in death. So Mary Reed died a year later, 1721, from whatever pirates died from in a Jamaican jail. So use your imagination. I'm sure it was pretty nasty. We don't know if either pregnancy was true, and I only left out two things for certain that I can actually prove here. The name of Calico Jack's ship I left out purposely, and the name of Anne Bonnie's parents. So that would be the father and the mistress. Now, at the beginning of our tour and our time together, I told you people have passed out. I'm going to take one more minute of your time before I set everybody loose. Back in September of last year, I brought my group back here, about eight or nine people. The kid next to me goes white as a ghost, literally, and I have to catch him by his armpit because he's about to hit his head on the ground. His boyfriend picks him up from the other side of him, and we carry him over to that brick wall where there's a little ledge, which is where we're going to end ourselves. So we take him over there, get him a bottle of water from the vending machine. He's feeling better. I then tell the story. They don't know yet what you now know about Anne Bonnie. After I tell the story, I send everybody loose with their devices. They pull me aside. We have to tell you something. What's going on, guys? We are two transgender males, meaning I had two females dressed as males, just like Anne and Mary on my tour. Mm. And it made complete sense as to why one of them passed out the minute we entered the space. Mm -hmm. Take that for what it is. Again, I have a lot of weird, uncanny things happen during these investigations. And most of them I can't explain other than there's no way that that was a coincidence. That's right. And I had other people that had had heart palpitations in this location. Um, the heat gets to them sometimes, yes. And I can debunk those things. But this one it was a nice, cool night. It was like, I don't know, 62, 64 degrees that night. So you guys know Carolina weather. So we are going to spread out. So David, if you do want to go to the front of the powder magazine, you can do that with your camera. Just don't interrupt other tours. If you want to go back to the cemetery, you can do that as well. Just don't interrupt the other tours. Okay. Um, but yeah, we'll spend five or ten minutes in here. Ask a question. Definitely put on the link. I'll let you back here. This place is more than not.
second night I brought this out for the tour, we're here, and the person using that was standing next to the person with the thermal imaging camera, and I was doing something, writing something down, and it said, pirate, clear as day, and you all heard it, and it was caught on the audio. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah, like it was, like, like I said, it's been about 75% accurate. Yeah, blue. I just heard I see you twice. Yeah, I know, and I'm like looking now. I'm like, okay, where are you? <laughs> Anything crazy going on with your camera? No, nothing I can see. So when I splice all that video together, I send it to YouTube so that way you guys can watch it however you want. TV set, computer, phone, tablet. That way you guys can. I have a pretty big computer screen. I did it that way on purpose so yeah. I can view those. Yeah, you can miss something very easy on a small screen like that. I like heard the you. funnel. Hmm? I heard funnel. Maybe wrong. <laughs> but it's a top of the funnel. Ooh, it, keeps, it said windows like two or three times now. See, that's why I keep checking windows. The windows it's probably referring to are over there. No? That corner of the loop. Building is also haunted, mm -hmm. and the mirrors like to fall off. 